Uh, good evening, sir. Pradeep Kulkarni, sir. Hello, good evening. Hari. Good evening, sir. Shall I stop the screen share? Oh, yeah, you start screen, screen sharing, you start. Sir, today uh, our section will be uh, live on YouTube also. Oh, no issue. Sure. Uh, can you confirm me, Hari, audio and video? Fine, no? Yes, sir, audio and video is okay. Sir. Okay, good. good. Hello, good evening everybody. Uh, I think still time is there. Shall we start? Okay. How many people are expected, Mr. Hari? Sir, maybe over 300 and 400 candidates. English, both Malala Malala and English, all languages. Okay, okay. All languages to join. So no issue. Then I think what we can do now, we can start on time. Another one minute time is there. Just on one time, we'll start. Let them join in a manner the way they want. But We'll begin the session, okay? Okay, sir. Okay. Just one minute. Hmm? Hello, good evening, everybody. Uh, we shall begin the session. And I think all of you are aware that this session is a crash course on uh, the retail banking. Now your fourth paper left over. Okay. And this entire session will be de will be dealing with the all modules. Okay. We'll be dealing with the all modules. And therefore, I just want you to fr brush up with which are all the contents we will be covering during this uh, module. Okay. So as you all are aware, the module A, Retail Banking covers unit one to four, very small module, very small module, but a, a very important one, at least one or two questions you can expect from this because it is the basics of our entire retail banking, okay? Then this is the section, I think, which is a very, very important one that is a retail banking, uh, retail products and uh, recovery related aspects. That is unit five to 16 unit 5 to 16 so almost 11 units are there okay 11 12 units are here in and 12 units in module b therefore what we'll do today we shall try to complete not only module a but also some parts of module b also okay and then the tomorrow by the end of the tomorrow we'll be almost at the fag end of completing the module b or there is a possibility if you all cooperate without uh, wasting time 
if you continue to keep listening and interacting only during the uh, uh, question and answer time, then I think we can be, will be in a position to complete the module B also. Thereafter, what we'll do, on 18th, we shall dedicate our time on understanding the, uh, you can say the arithmetical part or calculation part of the retail banking, okay? Simple interest, compound interest, EMI, annuity, uh, and, and it, uh, other aspects relating to calculation, practical session on calculating the uh, uh, various uh, kind of requirements that we will try learning on 18. And thereafter, there is a gap and a post gap. We'll come back and after coming back, we'll have another important session that is a marketing related part, unit 17 to 20, 22, very small unit. Okay. Thereafter, a bigger part is there and most number of questions last year appeared were from this section. Okay. So as such, the wealth management covers the retail banking products and other service products, other third party products, other uh, the uh, new areas uh, emerging such as wealth management, the uh, investment banking. Okay. Those aspects are there in the module D. So this is how we'll be covering and very short span of time. We'll try covering most of the aspects and that too will be touching in detail only the important aspects. Though the presentation will be available on the screen, we'll not be discussing on the entire aspects which are stated on the screen. I'll be touching only the important aspects. I'll be giving emphasis only on what is important, for example. Okay, now let us see. Uh, the, at the utmost, retail banking is a very, very important part for the bankers because that actually gives a huge amount of income to the banks that too with the least amount of risk, least amount of risk because it is a diversified portfolio. Okay, then what about that uh, diversification, how it works, then how the retail banking plays the role and uh, which are all the concepts in the retail banking which we apply and what is retail banking? What is wholesale banking? What is the difference between wholesale and retail banking? Those aspects we will try understanding. And the last, that is a branch profitability. That is the way uh, these are the four in units in a different way we will be covering. Okay. Now you can appreciate that this is very, very important point. Please make a note. See, why the retail there is a boom? The boom of, for the retail happened because of multiple factors. Economic side, GDP of the country is uh, absolutely growing and we are the fastest economy as on today, fastest growing economy in the world. And we have already surpassed during the last nine years, almost five stages and we are now at the fourth. Okay, we are now at the fourth. So that's the way economic factors are helping. Demography of the country is changing. What is mean by demography? Demography means the segment of population age-wise when you classify. Now, India became the world's youngest country. The reason is maximum population in our country is working population, young population. Okay, And that demographic dividend, I think every segment of economy now reaping. And banking is not away from that. Therefore, banking also reaping benefit from those young segments which are really being boosting the uh, the housing segment. Okay. Then next is the there is a support to all these activities by way of reforms and by way of change in policies, giving liberty to the banks to frame their own rules. Okay. That's the way the banking sector reforms, interest related uh, the uh, deregulation maybe on deposit count, maybe on advances count. So multiple way there is a support available through the reform processes that also is helping the bankers to frame appropriate product for the uh, retail. Okay. Then next is last but not least is support from the various policies of government such as right from affordable housing to Income tax benefits given to the housing loan buyers. Okay, those who buy the housing loan, interest element is being considered as a allowed deduction. Okay, that that part, such kind of things are helping the uh, bank to uh, make uh, wonderful strides in the growth in retail banking. 
Now, what is retail banking? Retail banking primarily is a individual financing, financing to individuals for their requirements. Now, what kind of requirements? Requirement may be on account of the entrepreneurial requirement or otherwise consumption requirement. Either requirements are met, then that is a retail segment. Typically, retail is understood as non-entrepreneurial purposes. But you can see from the chart here, banking is to individuals as well as the firms. And when it comes to the individuals, it is a retail, it is entrepreneurial. In the entrepreneurial, it may be agriculture, it may be MSME. Okay, it may be agriculture, it may be MSME. And under the retail, there is a mass retail banking and class retail banking, that is a private banking. So what is mass retail banking? What is class retail banking? At the end of this session, you would be appreciating it. Okay, first understand the major characteristics of retail financing is, it is a targeting individual customers, number one. Exam point of view, important slide. Therefore, I'm repeating it. Focus is on mass market segment. What is a mass market segment? Mass market segment is such a segment of economy which is having a, a decided range of income. Okay, decided range of income. Okay, let, let us say the uh, 10 lakhs to uh, 40 lakhs. 10 lakhs to 40 lakhs per annum earning people. That is, that is growing day by day, isn't it? That is going day by day. And that is actually creating boon to the banking. Okay. Mass market is a large market with little or no difference in taste. And most of these people, they have no difference taste. As a result, we can devise similar or standardized product. Means more or less same product can be devised, which can be suitable or appreciable by all the people. So that is what another thing means. There are two elements we have discussed. Target focuses on mass market and mass market helps us in uh, making same simple product, standardized product. Okay. And the third thing is it offers liability asset as well as other number of service products. And the delivery of the loans, delivery of the deposit, delivery of other services can happen either in a physical mode or in a virtual mode that is a physically in the branch or otherwise through internet banking mobile banking sms banking okay uh, or, or voice call banking uh, crm based banking multiple way services can be offered these are the key features i wish all of you to remember target focus offer and delivery okay target is individual customers focus is mass market offers all type of products liability product asset product and the service product, liability means deposit side product, asset means loan side products, and other service products such as the remittances, RTGS, NEFT, ECS, NASH, okay, ECS, we should not say now NASH, okay, UPI, okay, then uh, ATM, internet banking, all those things we offer, okay, then delivery mode is either physical or virtual. These are the important characteristics. And thereafter, you can see a significant part is because of these these aspects because of these aspects there are multiple products on offering multiple channels of distribution and multiple client groups are there and in within the client groups groups also you can see the client groups may range from uh, professionals to the employees professionals to employees public sector employees to private sector employees like that <laughs> Within the customer, there are multiple segments of the customer. Okay. It aggregates the heterogeneous group. Heterogeneous group means having different thought, having different idea, having different mindset. Such a people are there, which we are actually clubbing together and talking retail. Okay. And wide range of products, wide direct delivery channels, different delivery modes. Okay. And extended even to, as I told you, that even individual financing, even to a small businesses can also be, be a part of retail. Because retail is all about small amount of loans with the least risk. Because And which are all the advantages you can see here? Risk is spread because so many people we are giving. 
and all people given together becomes a loan portfolio retail portfolio even if few accounts becomes bad there is not a big shock to the bank because huge amount is not going to become npa suddenly that is one of the big advantage and we call it as spread the risk risk is spread across multiple customers wide customer base okay second is the customer loyalty is very high because what happens no anybody who is helping the client in making their dreams become true having their own house so naturally they become automatically attached with the bank and that's way loyalty is likely to be high okay third thing interest spread is not so bad okay though prima facie it appears that interest rate is low spread is not bad because the loan is safe risk is low as a result even in case of housing housing loan also there is a gain okay large client base okay and therefore we can have the uh, you can say the cross selling opportunities making making the customer uh, uh, more uh, attached more connected and you second very important thing is that there is a close scoring system is made available for uh, uh, on all individuals through the sibil sibil gives a score among, on customers as a result what happens that the how the customers pass trend of Uh, um, dealing with finances, dealing with his financial activities, are very clear to the bank, and as a result, the uh, best customer uh, we are in a position to uh, capture. And next, very important thing is today the world is of data mining, and the data mining is easily possible because more number of customers, their large number of information is we we are captured. and that captured data when we have that is the data warehouse this is the in the process we do the data mining we do the data segregation and then we use the data for multiple purposes okay and over a period of time even there is a credit cycle okay there is a less fluctuation in demand because more or less it goes in a steady demand pattern any doubt any question you can put me in the chat box otherwise i'll continue more i think i have explained you all but still anybody wanted to have clarity on any one of the aspect let let them come okay shall i move further can i get a thumbs up from all of you can i get a thumbs up for okay is it clear hello okay can i get a thumbs up can i move further or do you have any doubt good thank you thank you thank you and you keep that open so that you can i'll be in between i'll be asking okay now no doubt there are so many advantages but at the same time there are constraints also retail banking and the retail banking problems the as the large client base is an advantage the managing large number of clients is also a problem because once the customers are number in more so naturally problems due to their perceptional issues also becomes more second biggest challenge is it the technology disruption is so high that the kind of technology we implement how quickly that is becoming stale even the people who implement they themselves do not know and therefore therefore it is another issue in the retail financing or retail uh, banking activity okay third thing because of this unsecured retail loans personal loan consumer loans and the credit card receivables that is the credit card dues there are high delinquencies happening because these uh, a set of people no they are not so credit discipline people someone need to remind them someone need to tell them that in you need to maintain your uh, the uh, credit history proper and unless someone does it uh, they they think that it's matter of small amount what's the issue but in the process delinquencies are becoming high okay and then they are least faithful though they temporarily develop a loyalty but the at the same time they calculate in a very shorter span of their, their banking life and 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 therefore they Uh, they they call a bank run okay an outflow of retail deposit okay many a times it may happen due to 
the their perceptional issue and the cost of maintaining a branch network it is always a problem and therefore as much as possible we have to serve the uh, uh, what you can say the through technology this is a data this is a data rarely of any use but just have a look you can see here retail loan growth i'm just i just wanted to show you the growth that's all uh, retail loan growth okay march 20 2659 21 29 lakh 86 000 crore see 3 lakh 3 lakh crore added and now 29 to 34 34 means 4 lakh crore retail loans added and that is the kind of growth okay 4 lakh crore 20, against the 29 lakh adding is a huge sum you can say the 18 percent almost a growth and that's what he just i wanted to show you and then there are few things one need to remember as far as exam point of view this slide talks about two important things one is <coughs> see one is that we have to have the efficient delivery mechanism means providing service in a very effective way unless and until that has got a, a, in place in the bank uh, retail banking growth is becoming uh, is becomes very very diff difficult okay number two there are innovations on multiple channels okay and uh, pa parallelly customer product appropriateness pricing and third thing for any dissatisfaction or improper service given by the bank the issue comes up with regard to customer dissatisfaction and that customer dissatisfaction leads to the customer grievance and when the customer grievance happens then there is a internal banking ombudsman is there internal complaint management system is there in addition to this externally there is a rbi's rbi's integrated ombudsman scheme is there rbi's integrated ombudsman scheme 2021 is there in addition to the second one the consumer protection act 2019 so these are the two different modes are available for customer to, to approach them for grievance redressal grievance redressal okay now we will try understanding few part of rbi integrated ombudsman scheme as well as consumer protection act because exam point of view very very important okay so next slide we'll try learning about that that is rbi integrated ombudsman scheme okay any other doubt any other question on this slide anyone wanted to talk okay now you see here integrated ombudsman scheme okay integrated ombudsman scheme is a scheme launched by reserve bank of india in 2021 2021 and this 2021 reserve bank of india scheme actually was brought in with the objective of one nation one ombudsman one nation one ombudsman as a result what is the result as of now how many ombudsmans are there in our country one nation one ombudsman now if one ombudsman is there in examination question comes how many rbi ombudsman offices are there what question comes how many rbi ombudsman offices are there your answer should be 30 then what is this 30 and what is this ombudsman please make a note rbi's okay office of rbi ombudsman o r b i o o r b i o means office of rbi ombudsman and these offices are established by reserve bank of india in almost every regional office of the uh, Re reserve bank of india okay now what do they do they simply facilitate customer lodging to uh, ombudsman okay they just help the client they help the customer to lodge the complaint they help the customer uh, in understanding the grievance whether it is really required to be agree uh, that uh, uh, upscaled to two ombudsman or can it be resolved by counseling okay that's the way that effort to do reserve bank of india 
open the office of RBI Ombudsman. Number two. Number three, the complaint can be made on four different ways. Number one, the complaint can be made in writing to RBI Integrated Ombudsman, RBI Integrated Ombudsman directly at Chandigarh office, at Chandigarh office. Every bank branch need to have the address of that. Number two, complaint can be lodged through RBI's portal. RBI's portal, RBI website, when you go, there is a complaint management system. And when you click to the complaint management system, then you get two options. That is track your complaint or lodge a new complaint. And that time you click that, then you will get the multiple columns to be filled in and online you can lodge a complaint. Third thing, you can call one triple four, four. Okay, one triple four, uh, one. I I I believe. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I forgot the number. That five digit IVR number is there. Just call and then you can make a complaint over the uh, IVR call. Okay, so these are the ways a complaint can be uh, put up to integrated ombudsman. So ombudsman. Once the complaint is made, complaint will go to deputy ombudsman. Ombudsman and deputy ombudsman are appointed by Reserve Bank of India. Okay, one triple four eight. Thank you, Ramesh. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice of you. I think all the people they can get benefit one triple four eight. That that is the number. Okay. Thank you. Now, then the once the complaint uh, that uh, lodge, then it will go to the deputy ombudsman just to see whether there is any grievance okay on the various aspects which are stated as a grievance to be taken up okay and those customer commitments wherever they are failed by the bank and bank did not resolve them within a span okay given time then the customer is escalating to rbi ombudsman that only will be checked and it will be admitted and once it gets admitted then the details will be sought from the bank also. Okay, detail will be sought from the bank also. This deputy ombudsman and ombudsman are the people appointed by Reserve Bank of India. They are a senior executives of Reserve Bank. Okay, chief general manager level person is appointed as a ombudsman and the deputy ombudsman, deputy general manager and above. Okay, and they are normally appointed for a period of three years. Normally appointed for a period of three years, their tenure can be extended. Okay, their tenure can be extended and once the complaint reaches then then the bank from bank side the details are called and from every bank need to appoint a nodal officer not less than the general manager rank uh, not less than the general manager bank to provide the information to ombudsman and once the both the side information is available the ombudsman tries to make a facilitation make tries to conciliation reconcile the matter discuss with them and try to resolve with the compromise if it is done well and good if it is not done then ombudsman gives award and maximum amount for which the award is given by the rbi integrated ombudsman is at for 20 lakhs and 1 lakh is for mental agony harassment okay and the cost okay mental agony harassment cost to compensate that 20 plus 1 lakh this is the amount for which the complaint award can be given by the ombudsman these are the five six important elements make a note of it and then another significant element is in case the customer accepts the award in case the customer accepts the award within 30 days from the award declared then bank for bank it becomes compulsory to implement else the bank may initiate the action for appealing simultaneously even customer also not happy with the award customer also can proceed and appeal and appellate authority is now changed executive director department who is handling the department of customer education he is the appellate authority okay so these are the few aspects make a note of it Six aspects I have told, all the six aspects, very critical, banking paper, retail banking paper, everywhere, okay? So then, now since you are left only with one paper, so very important, make a note. And then next is the Consumer Protection Act, Consumer Protection Act 2019. It deals with the 
actually it deals with not only the bank related but also the product related product deficiency service deficiency anywhere due to deficiency there is a loss happen there are damages happen to the customer customer can claim those damages okay and the pecuniary jurisdiction means monetary jurisdiction district forum that is district forum we should not say what we should say consumer dispute di district consumer dispute redressal commission state consumer dispute redressal commission national consumer dispute redressal commission okay so these are the three commissions district 50 lakhs state 50 lakhs more than 50 lakhs to 2 crore and national more than 2 crore this is the monetary ceiling and if uh, somebody is not happy with the district forum judgment then he may appeal to state and the person who is unhappy with the states he may appeal to the national and the person who is not happy with the national then he has to appeal to supreme court okay this is the step by step thing okay and very important thing is that in the consumer protection act 2019 there is a central consumer protection authority got appointed and the central consumer protection authority is a uh, almost a commissioner rank person okay commissioner rank person is appointed and he has what he was give he has been given a very wide powers under this particular act okay now i think this much is enough any any doubt any question please and in both the cases there the period is there complaint lodging period for rbi ombudsman is 12 months from the date of complaint there whereas under the opera it is the 24 months that is two years okay here there 12 months from the date of reply received from the bank or here it is 24 months from the date of his uh, uh, that uh, cause of action arisen okay so this is the way uh, the any doubt any question if there are no doubts then i'll i'll move further okay then as you see the consumer price okay pricing inadequacy of mis these are all the challenges in retail banking we have already discussed them the lack of information not having the full knowledge about the KYC ML issues, risk management, technologies, so and growth, growth is used. What was the 12? Are yeah. See, 12 months, 24 months is RBI integrated ombudsman scheme. Okay, RBI integrated ombudsman scheme. Within how much time he can complain? Then the to make the complaint to RBI integrated ombudsman one has got 12 months time and this 12 months runs from what this 12 months from the date of reply received from the bank or otherwise 13 months from the date of complaint made 13 months from the date of complaint made that is 12 months plus one month because no reply received clear so means what primarily the customer has to first complain to the bank and wait for one month and if the com uh, complaint is either resolved or not resolved by the bank and that resolution is not acceptable to the customer then only he can approach the integrated ombudsman is it clear similarly under the consumer protection act it is the 24 months okay there it was a 12 months here it is a 24 months clear doubt clear dear nitya Nitya Thomas. Hope clear. Okay, thank you. When once the doubt gets clear, I, I'll, I'll be very happy to have the reply received. Okay. Then what way the retail banking is moving ahead? I think all of you know. Now it is becoming an experiential banking and UPI like application pro programming interface. Your CKYCR, Central KYCR, isn't it? CKYCR like api api enabled technology which is helping the banks to just download the kyc of the customer so that he can really manage the uh, without uh, any document submission by the customer the services financial services can be accessible to the customer so that technology is working now then banking as a service that is a bus exam point of view remember now word of fintech company so there are many companies which are coming forward. Bima Bazaar, okay. Bima Bazaar, like company, okay. Cred is a aptech, okay, fintech company. Cred, what it does, 
I, I'm just giving you an example. Cred actually enables the customer to have all his credit card related information in one go. He need not have to track any bill anywhere. Once the bill is generated automatically, that bill uh, is giving, getting uploaded on the uh, cred and cred is uh, displaying it to the customer in one go this bill is due this bill is there is a penalty this bill is very uh, some hidden charges like that okay so this such a companies are working and they are helping banker on one side as well as the clients on another side okay then all of you know now many apps are coming forward to give the lending small amount lending Okay, digital banking is going ahead. Now, all of you know UPI has made uh, altogether different strides. Okay, now UPI, RTGS, NEFT, those are business to business or person to person transactions. Very, very quicker way the uh, possibility of happening and they are happening on P2P basis. Okay, now P2B also and artificial intelligence. All of you know that artificial intelligence and machine learning, it is helping the banks to prevent the fraud on transaction, identify the, detect the anomaly, customer behavior, which kind of things this customer is more prone to spend and accordingly we can choose a particular product for him. Okay, and the risk management is the day at the same time algorithm. So all these ways, the artificial intelligence is helping the organizations. And this, this definitely is going to change the future dynamics of uh, retail banking. Okay, big tech, you know, Google, you know, Amazon, you know, isn't it? Google, Amazon, uh, App, Apple, these are the companies which has got tremendous, huge amount of data. Your, your Facebook, isn't it huge data? And that data management is big tech, big technology. Okay. So quick, quick answers. Quick. Advantage of retail banking does not include. None of the above. Why? Because all are all are advantages. Risk is less is an advantage. Income is relatively more as spread is more advantage. Stable model with less volatility. So none of the above. Because here does not. Okay. Does not. Which one of the following is not an advantage of retail banking? Not an advantage. High cross selling is an advantage or not an advantage? High default rate due to large number of customers. High customer loyalty. Less volatility in the business. So this is a fact. High default rate, okay, <laughs> is, an, is a disadvantage. Okay, is a disadvantage. So not an advantage. Okay, it is less volatility is an advantage, isn't it? What is the question asked? Not an advantage. Which one of the following is not part of the retail banking? actually providing term loans for the purpose of setting up of industrial unit. Okay, that is not the retail. That is not the retail. After outbreak of COVID-19, future of retail banking will depend mainly on mainly on digital banking. The proportion of housing loan in retail loan segment is more than 50%. Okay, I think this is the way it goes and now very important unit we are, we are discussing now, how the retail banking is approached by the bankers. So there are three different approaches. Number one is a strategic business unit. Number two is a departmental approach. Number three is a integrated approach. Number three is a 
integrated approach and every bank depending upon their infra their people their capabilities they adopt a different model which model is good which model is not good that altogether a different aspect but try understanding depending upon the capabilities depending upon the technology what do they have depending upon the people do they have the bank adopts the appropriate model for uh, uh, encashing the uh, retail banking okay encashing the retail banking okay now for that you can see here the sbu strategic banking unit is absolutely one independent functional unit means retail itself will be a one of the vertical which drives the part of the profit of the entire banking segment means like all other businesses how do do they contribute the retail banking also will be one stream to contribute to profit of the organization and that's the way it has got its independent vision its independent direction and its independent working it is a profit center automatic and they have their discrete marketing plan and that they analyze the competition they prepare a solid marketing up campaign and they work and that's the way actually who do the this kind of working mostly foreign banks mostly new generation private banks now many of the public sector banks also started adopting after verticalization after verticalization okay so this is how sbu any doubt any question exam 100 percent question comes huh? either of the three okay now second is the department very simple like many departments retail banking is also department in the bank and one department it works okay but strategic decisions are taken at the corporate level or board level or the top level and that decision is passed on to the department and this works like a planning marketing department retail banking is also one additional department is it clear is it clear whereas the third thing is absolutely integrated means one side part of the department part of the strategic business unit put together is a third integrated approach is the in retail banking that is known as integrated approach which combines sbu as well as departmental approach which takes care of all the aspects which otherwise are not part of them such as a branch banking such as a card payment such as a retail sales payroll ex customer experience all these aspects which are otherwise managed by different departments they also are considered by the retail banking as a com as a combined way that will be looked into one database which is available on a, on these counts that will be used by the uh, uh, retail banking segment also and the adequate advantage is derived okay now these are the three now implementation models are implement how it is implemented in retail banking either outsource that is end to end outsourcing what is mean by end to end outsourcing see in retail banking there are elements called as either liability products or asset products or service products am i right liability product asset product or service product take the example of asset product because liability products are there are much much process are not involved but under the asset product right from sourcing to closure of the account in between there are multiple way the customer interaction can happen am i right for example lead generation the next is the document collection third thing is a customer uh, data analysis fourth thing is a decision making fifth thing is documentation formalities sixth thing is disbursement seventh thing is creation of charge so then seventh thing is uh, the monitoring and eighth thing is the recovery so all these elements of a loan if they are there is a possibility you know except for decision making except for decision making rest of all can be outsourced and are we doing so then end to end outsourcing or major areas outsourcing or part of the areas only outsource and last is within the department they are being sourced clear within the bank only source these are the multiple way the retail banking 
can work on liability count on asset count or on service count is it clear is it clear any doubt very very important huh? these these slides and the previous two slides they are very important very very important i hope you appreciate this okay any doubt let's see these slides these two slides okay these these slides sbu department and the integrated these are the three approaches and then this is the model model of delivery model to deliver and what are all the model that is some banks adopt the total outsourcing like hdfc bank idbi bank most of the processes they outsource most of the processes only few strategic pro processes only are kept at their level and then predominant outsourcing is out of these multiple uh, sources mul multiple activities large amount of activities are outsourced okay then partial outsourcing okay few outsource few are done in house sourcing is no outsourcing business everything is done by the bank employees only okay now how the process process of retail banking works in the bank here terminology is critical my friends i wish all of you to give a deeper attention and listen very carefully they are broadly classified four one is a horizontally organized model vertically organized model and first of all understand these two and then automatically you will understand uh, three and four okay so first two if you understand then remaining two you can understand so horizontally organized uh, model means what horizontally organized model is nothing but different process for different product different process for different different models for different products and offerings okay and every solution product wise every solution is product wise and this is what we followed up as by the public sector banks and old generation private banks new generation private banks they follow this vertical model they follow totally vertical model and this vertical model when they follow what happens there they function their functionality is across the products entire data which is available with regard to customers uh, management that entire centralized customer database across all the products getting used and this is used by the private sector banks here you see every everybody means deposit product related data that deposit deposit department is holding that deposit department only is managing whereas in a vertically organized data if there is a data available at the deposit front that data gets shared to the everybody and as a result the loan department also makes use of that data and marketing department tries to contact the customer and then the lead is generated everything is done when there is a vertically organized model works is it clear so vertical organized is nothing but the available data gets shared across all the functional departments of the organization so common database for all products here each product separate database most of the banks adopted this process till 1990 okay now even public sector banks are also moving to this vertical organized model okay is it clear are you are you are you are you clear with this concept because these two are cleared automatically next two will be automatically gets cleared i am not getting any answer either either the positive affirmation or negative affirmation nothing is coming up hello good thank you amit thank you okay thank you okay now let me move so here you can see okay no no first we will complete the remaining two predominantly horizontally organized model means what maximum functions means not all but most of the function most of the business functions are horizontal then we call it as a predominantly horizontal okay and predominantly vertical 
means most of the common information is available for most of the products means every department works on this or every department works on this few departments only are connected like that means maximum focus is on horizontal then predominantly horizontal maximum uh, departments or maximum verticals maximum uh, section segments of the bank business are on vertical then vertically organized model then predominantly uh, vertically organized model. okay as usual here also the foreign banks and the private banks new private new sector private bank there okay now you see here horizontally organized what happens customers are captured home loans are given customers are captured personal loans are given okay customers are captured credit card is given now you see here in case the same thing happens in a vertically organized what will happen a home loan home loan customer automatically data is available he will be used for credit card also credit card also is it clear so that is the way vertically organized versus horizontally organized works so businesses are approach in a segment way and as you know the retail business works on segment basis and segments are very important cust and what is the segment the section of the customer which customers are suitable for gold loan now as all of you know see the un bank like union bank of india they wanted gold loan to be implemented in uh, across all over india right from 1996 but unfortunately or fortunately the issue is not with the gold loan see not with the loan against jewelry the issue is with the segment of people for example in northern part of the country pledging the gold is assumed as a matter of insult to the family so nobody will come forward and pledge the uh, jewels of their family members to raise the loan now the trend is changing but i am telling you the 10 10 15 years ago when i was working in madhya pradesh we struggled hard to implement the gold loan loan for loan to the farmers or loan to anybody for uh, against the jewel nobody was coming forward the reason is the mindset of the people and as a result naturally what happens bank need to adopt okay let us be a make a very focused part in the southern part of the country geography based approach this part of the country let us give the focus on loan against gold jewelry that part let us focus on something else that is a geography based here segment based segment every customer uh, uh, means all all the customers across they are seg segmented on the multiple counts professionals housewives farmers okay students uh, like that okay segment segmented and that segment is targeted according to our products okay so branches are also classified as resource centers profit centers priority centers means you can see the personal banking branch when a, when when a branch is personal banking branch means totally focused on retail business isn't it and secondly let us say large corporate branch large corporate branch means definitely that branch may not give the more most significance to the uh, retail but they will definitely get the data that data will be shared with the personal banking branch to cater the requirements okay so like this the segmentation of the branches segmentation of the client segmentation of the area segmentation okay so this and this rural semi urban urban all of you know isn't it based on the population the particular demography is getting classified as a metro population or the rural population so which product in which area which product is which population which product is to which segment of the uh, society and that is the way three different approaches segmented approach geography based approach and the classification based approach okay so few things A any doubt any question then i'll move further okay then next part is the product development product development i i know 
that most of you are well aware any retail product when it is developed basically a market survey gets conducted okay and after the market survey only the customers actual needs are identified and suiting to that need a product is developed and after the product is developed first of all it will be pilot checked pilot checked in particular two three regions and how the response comes what are all the problems in the product delivery product acceptance product feedback all that is being obtained and thereafter whatever the deficiencies if at all there they are fine tuned and finally rolled out across the india this is the way product is normally developed for retail product banking i hope clear clear and generally what happens generally generally the top management is there which gives a, a, a direction that let us have this product and when 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 the top management says let's have the product naturally it becomes the most common model and that is the way we implement it okay uh, firstly either on the basis of research and when it goes with research these are the steps secondly purely on market demand suddenly there is a demand is observed by the uh, people in the market and we develop the product okay suddenly we observe that customers are demanding that and we develop the product without doing much research and all third thing is the top management follow and when we do the fundamental way fundamental approach should be this a to g model a to g model okay and next processes different process models for retail asset products are first of all common form of process model is centralized retail asset processing i think all of you know most of the banks have adopted a centralized retail loan processing center and this retail loan processing center what it does it actually processes all the proposals sourced by the branches or otherwise their independent marketing team processed at a single point and depending upon the resource available at their place sometimes the retail loan processing centers only complete the documentation part and only disbursement part is left over to the respective branches this is the common form process model that is central centralized retail asset processing center second is the centralized processing for some asset products not all asset products for example the some asset products such as you, you the you, how housing loan or mortgage loan these two loans only are centralized rest of all such as vehicle loan and those things are non centralized so that is the partial thing centralized processing for some asset products okay and third thing is no centralization business but only regional processing hubs regional means catering to the requirement of multiple branches and few I mean, means in the region and uh, that hub only caters to the requirement of those branches no way centralization is it clear so multiple models are implemented three okay clear no i hope clear not not much complicated are there okay then model for processing liability products even there also the same thing what about now many banks have adopted account opening a centralized way issue of passbook centralized way atm card debit card issuance uh, centralized way so that the customized or the uh, customized debit card with name and everything gets uh, printed on the debit card and it comes okay pin is mailed directly to the people so like that the centralization happened and this centralized functioning is helping the banks to get uh, uh, what you can say the resolve with large number of complaints because people now appreciate that there will be time for receiving all those things okay and naturally the time is a key differentiator customer wants as early and with less amount of issues and and therefore it is a business sensitive if it is delayed no customer can coolly quit the bank and he will go to other so turn around time and that to proper service they they become the key if we don't deliver properly and there are defects then we will be losing the business as well as the customer business model followed by banks for retail banking are
good fantastic foreign banks which entered in retail banking when not able to achieve the business objective so for example a foreign bank enters into retail banking business when they don't achieve what their objective is what do they do basically remember one thing <laughs> no sooner they see okay they see that it is not worthy to be continued in the business because they do the business for profits only and if the profits are not seen they quit non suitability of a business model or approach of a bank depends on non suitability of business model or approach of a bank depends upon none of these okay well all all are important for us corporate strategy business objective business mix okay all is a suitable business model of retail banking are not drawn on the basis of which one of the following capacity okay then pricing i think a very simple chapter this is uh, pricing of a product as you know that bank uh, has got a model called stand alone pricing because already rate of interest are decided okay most of the liability products that is savings bank term deposit products rate of interest is decentralized and accordingly bank decides the rate of interest okay and uh, then there are very special codes are there for high value deposits okay and uh, similarly the loan regarding only large corporates they get a concessional rate of interest and in some scenario when customer is availing more than one product a bundling of the product is done and that time only the specific bundling of a product and service sometimes there is a small concession is offered on buying the another product with a view to cross sell okay so these are the few things with regard to pricing any doubt any question if there is no question then what we'll do we'll break for 10 15 minutes and come back okay and before we start you have any questions or doubts or any way you want me to change my delivery or any suggestions with regard to proceeding further please suggest me okay accordingly i'll take care of that and i'll move forward okay uh, quickly have a break of uh, 10 15 minutes and come back okay hello so let's have a break break time hari hari okay 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 definitely i'll take care huh
Hari, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, please, uh, I, I'm, I'm going, huh? Hey, it is a break time.
Hello, good evening, everybody. Uh, now, before uh, we start, anyone has got anything to say about the session? Okay. Uh, I think uh, without uh, confirming, I just initiated and I had one hour session. Now, any suggestions are there to going forward? How do I need to handle? Uh, I think I'll be definitely moderating myself. Okay. Uh, any any points or anything you want me to take care while while going ahead because this much of part of the session was significant for one or two questions but coming sessions will be very important and therefore uh, it will be very uh, useful for all of us to have those points in mind and then going going forward will be fruitful to one and all any points I think one suggestion came. Definitely, I'll 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 take care of that, and that is I think uh, uh, Mr. And Mrs. Susai was asking that uh, please uh, little go slowly. Definitely, I'll take care of that aspect. Don't worry. Next, anybody anything? Whether my pronunciations are okay? Hello. Whether English is okay? Is it understandable? A simple English or a very complex words are used? Sir, complex words are used, sir. Hello. Sir, uh, complex word. What is just that? Have Tamil medium. What do you want? Sir, 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 little bit slowly, sir. Yeah, definitely, definitely slow. I definitely it's make it slow. Okay, don't worry. Yes, okay. Sir, sir. I'm also Tamil medium student, sir. Okay, okay, okay. No, fully Tamil because... medium candidate. Ah, yeah, definitely. We'll go slow. Okay, we'll go yes, slow. Hmm? Okay, okay. Thank you. Huh? Shall we move now? Okay. Now, after taking the feedback, I'm moving ahead. See, now when it comes to the pricing, pricing means what? Pricing means either on deposit count, uh, giving the rate of interest, or otherwise on loan count, the uh, uh, charging the interest. So this is how the pricing aspect comes on either deposits and loans. Now you see most of the banks and in most of the products. There is a standalone pricing. What do you mean by standalone pricing? Generally, the bank's ALM, bank's asset liability management practice, and bank's fund requirement that are being taken into account and accordingly, rate of interest for various deposit products and various loan products are decided by the bank. But in a, in a scenario of retail banking, there is a possibility, there is a possibility of fine tuning means making the rate of interest suitable to the kind of customer and that to simultaneously making it advantageous to the bank how it can work for example somebody is giving a very huge value of deposit for example 200 crore 300 crore such an amount somebody is ready to give and he is expecting bit higher rate of interest now therefore some banks they have a special code for such scenario okay special quote for such scenario when they are in need of money but when they don't need money even that time even high value deposit also they may not give any special rate okay similarly large corporates big big corporates they bargain for rate of interest on their loan and they get a concessional rate and bank also feels that at one go 100 crore 150 crore loan proposals uh, uh, get works so 150 crore on one side and 100 accounts we need to sanction housing loan then only it will become 140 isn't it so therefore there is a possibility of large corporates may get concessional rate depending upon the market scenario so this is what two things okay then third thing third very important thing is price bundling means what for example if you are taking housing loan and together with a credit card and opening a saving bank account, then on credit card, whatever that admission charges are there or joining fees is there, that fees get waived or annual concession for one year will be given, annual charge. Like that, the aspect is a bundling path. Means all the three together, we are in a position to capture a customer. Why we do? Because that, that is advantage for cross-selling. On one customer, we are able to sell three different products. Is it clear? Is it clear? 
Now here with the diagram, I tried to explain you that there is a current account sales on product A, current account sales product B. Means depending upon the three different category of current accounts, which maintain different kind of balances, what we can do it to current account fellow? We, we cannot do anything to the current account person because current account persons, current account persons, they are not current account customers, they are not supposed to get any interest. So what banker normally do? Bankers normally tries to give the other facilities to them. Other facilities at a lesser rate, other facilities at concessional rate. Now, here is a difference. Difference between corporate banking and retail banking. So first target. Who is the target? Individual. Who is the target here? Corporate. Retail banking is a mass banking, mass market. Why mass market? A huge number of clientele covered. Here is a business corporate. So select corporate. Here it is mostly business to customer. Whereas here, most of the clients are business to business customers. Means they manufacture it and then they sell to the, again, another business. Such kind of customers are being addressed in the corporate banking. Here, ticket size is very small. Ticket size means the quantum of loan. Here, ticket size is very big. Here, risk is widespread. Here, risk is concentrated. And at the same time, customer base is small. Here, returns are higher. Here, returns are low due to bargain, concession. Here, monitoring and recovery. Very laborious because so many places we need to visit. In corporate banking, less laborious because at one go, we, we can contact the customer. Impact of NPA is relatively less, whereas impact of NPA relatively very high. One account NPA almost equal to 100 retail banking accounts. Any doubt, any question, any point, you can put a chat. Hello? Any doubt, any question, any point, you can put in the chat. You can be ready with the chat. Always you should continue. In case you have a doubt, immediately you can post there itself. Wow, very good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, implementation model followed by banks for retail banking include, which are all the models it includes, horizontally organized model, vertically organized model, Predominantly vertically organized model, predominantly or horizontally organized. One, two, three only. One, two, three, four. Which is that correct answer? Correct answer is all four. Am I right? All four. Actually, fourth one um, answer option is missing. One, two, three, four. Which of the following ways? The pricing structuring for products and service is not attempted by the bank. Standalone pricing, special quote, bundled pricing, which is not adopted. All are adopted means which is not adopted. None of these. So I think that should be the answer. You see. Okay. Good. Next. Which one of the following is not included under the retail banking? Online banking, medium business, high net worth individuals, corporate entities. Who is not included? Excellent, excellent. Thank you. So, yeah. Which one of the following form is the backbone of the retail banking income? Which one of the following forms the backbone of retail banking income. From where you get the income? So mostly we get the income on asset count because with regard to uh, retail, retail clientele, savings account balances are not so huge. So whatever income we derive, we derive on the asset product that is mortgage loan or retail loan or personal loan. Okay. Under which category the sale of insurance product falls? Retail liability, retail assets, third party products. Third 
third party products very good now here is a very important session uh, let me go not so fast very slowly see there are two important concepts need to be understood one is a profit another one is a profitability profitability what is the profit profit is nothing but your total revenue total earnings total revenue what a bank gets from that we have to remove the cost means on one side there are the various income heads on another side there are various expenditure heads this income minus expenditure is your profit isn't it now after that only you remove tax and etc etc but this is primarily a profit what what is the profitability now profitability is all about whether that profit is really okay for your capacity is it worth to your uh, assets for example there are two banks a bank and b bank this bank earned 200 200 crore profit and this bank earns 300 crore profit you may say this b bank is better bank you may say b bank is better bank but no sooner if i write down down below again the 200 crore profit is earned by 1000 employees and here b bank has got 5000 employees now which bank is better a bank am i right yeah, though there are 1000 employees they are contributing the higher profit am i right and then you can see third dimension so for example there is a asset base asset base of only let us say 40000 crore and here for b there is asset base of 120000 crore which is better than so naturally this is the way when you compare the profit figure with other dimensions of the business then you get to know the profitability and then that will indicate us whether the bank or a company is doing good or not good okay so then profit focuses on bottom line income whereas profitability measures are whether there is a appropriate return on our investment whether there is appropriate return or return on our equity equity means our capital investment that must give me money isn't it and profitability is a measure of efficiency and therefore are we successful or are we fail that is determined not on the basis of amount of profit but on the basis of profitability is it clear shall i move further okay now next you see these are the few fundamental concepts gross profit operating profit net profit very clearly given okay now as you know bank most of the income and expenditure that is earned from either interest paid interest earned banks major expenses is interest paid banks major income is the interest that it earn and in addition to that some charges which it recover now major expenditure is interest on now question is whether whatever profit is earned by the bank is it really in tune with the kind of business bank is doing the kind of assets bank has got whether in tune with that the income is there or not that is to be seen for the profitability of the bank and therefore this formula is widely used that formula is return on assets and return on equity what is the return on assets return on asset is nothing but you can see here the net income what is mean by net income fee income plus net interest income minus all the operating cost all the operating cost means your interest income as well as other operating cost is removed so what is left over net income is left over net income divided by average total assets then the, whatever answer comes is the return on assets how the average total assets are done so in my balance sheet there is a last year figure 2022 total assets and 2023 total assets this tot this plus this divided by 2 
then i will get the average total assets okay average total i don't want to complicate at this juncture therefore i am also concluding with the very simple way rather than telling you average working assets okay so this is how the average is it clear return on asset formula then second is the you know that return on asset only gives you against the total assets what the bank is having and those comparison to that assets what is my net income what is the bank's net income that is the way the return on assets get calculated and industry wise it is expected to be always better than more than 2 and for for your general consumption on an average now itself now in recent past only little bit return on assets has been improved from minus uh, that is 0.98 to 1.3 1.4 like that very few banks are having the return average uh, return on asset more than 2 okay then next net interest income is nothing but interest received minus interest paid so what is net interest margin net interest margin is this net interest income divided by this average total assets so exam point of view these formula are important this formula are important and net interest margin is telling us how well the bank earns income on the assets okay and nim is an indicator for the bank's profitability okay bank's profitability now return on equity is bit complicated way put up in the ex, uh, your your book but we can understand like this see you know the first of all we have to understand what is mean by leverage leverage is nothing but see in my balance sheet in my balance bank's balance sheet this part is my capital part am i right if this is my capital part i you all know you all know this capital part for a bank is very always small whereas we do the business on the deposit money our assets are built here not on our money more whereas deposit money more that is why how much is my money and let us say my money is 400 and i am building the assets means my asset side is telling me that i have 1800 worth assets means what my leverage is my leverage is more than 4 bank assets are 18 divided by 4 how much it is 44 the 16 4 by the 10 so means 4.5 is my leverage if 4.5 is my leverage then i know that i have calculated on the back back screen the return on assets that return on assets multiplied by this leverage is is equal to is equal to return on equity okay is it clear is it clear return on equity is nothing but sir could you please repeat okay leverage see let us say again i repeat the same example my profit is my my capital is 400 whereas my other liabilities are 1200 my asset side will be 1600 correct no because this side also 1600 that side also 1600 okay i am not at all taking out any intangible 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 nothing is there let us say here 16 here 16 clear now first of all how the leverage is calculated so my i have built the 1600 assets against the capital of 400 means what is the leverage leverage is four times four times that is what is expected to be as per as per basel 3 also your leverage is expected to be not more than Four, okay. So four is the leverage, correct? Fantastic. Any doubt? Any question? And once I have got that four, now I know that my return on asset is one point nine. How much? The how much that return on assets? One point nine or one point eight or one point five. Then if that is one point five multiplied by four, six is my return on equity. return on assets multiplied by leverage 
Okay? Good. Now, here are the various uh, strategies to improve uh, the banking operation. How to improve? Business realignment, channel optimization, reducing the process cost, improving the staff productivity, adopting the modern technology, managing with who are all our suppliers, <clears throat> okay, then uh, who are all the uh, outsource people, product bundling, relationship pricing, the uh, cost job data sharing, building 360 degree view on the customer. So multiple strategies are there, okay, multiple strategies are there. The most important strategies amongst all, amongst all are this real-time cross-selling, okay. Moment of truth. See, what happens you know, as a branch manager, you need to understand. Let us say you are a branch person. You attend the customer's marriage and greet the customer. You see the kind of bondage get developed between you and the customer. But if you think that, why there is a need to go to all the way from house and attend the marriage, then what happens for him? That was a significant moment. Okay, for example, your customer... Uh, receives a prize from the state government as a best industrialist. What is wrong in celebrating his success? If you celebrate his success across on your branch premises, invite few more clients, then what happens? That customer feels very happy and he becomes our ambassador. And that's how such moments are known as moment of truth. Moment of truth. And then automatically customer uh, spreads the message word of mouth and word of mouth is more powerful than word of mouth okay moment of truth okay moment of truth okay truth okay divya good then so this is the way uh, the few things, few strategies, because luckily, uh, 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 we, we don't have this luxury to discuss all the points. Otherwise, I would have been really happy to have the detailed session, but not required. Exam point of view, what is important that I have shared. And now, in case you get it out, what I'll do now, after the end of this session, I'll share the presentation. Tomorrow, when we start a session, you have any area to be revisited. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate, okay? We can definitely spend few moments on uh, re-looking into it, okay? Now, next, what are all the important uh, uh, factors which affect the profit? There are three important factors. Number one is an economic factor. Number two is an industry-specific factor. And number three is a bank-specific factor. These three are important factors which impact the profitability of the bank. Number one, macroeconomic. As usual, GDP, GDP growth, market share, okay, GDP growth, inflation, these play a very critical role in, uh, in the growth of our business. Similarly, industry level, a particular industry may not work, more number of NPAs occur. We may put that particular industry as a watch industry and as a result, business in that particularly, those employees, those, for example, in, in 2021, 2021, 22, suddenly there was a, uh, uh, what you can say, the software employees were uh, the removed from the company. They were, they were off the job. And as a result, what happened? There was a move. There was a news across the banking that there is a downfall in the software employee segment and they are removed from the employment. So automatically there was a warning for that such people before accepting, before onboarding, or before disbursing the loan, check once again, are they still continuing employment or not? So the, such kind of things are a part of our own. Then as usual, level of CASA. Why level of CASA is important? Because CASA enables us to give the rate of interest, best rate of interest on the our loan products. Higher the CASA, we have got more the lesser interest payable deposit. When lesser interest payable deposits are there, so naturally we have got a large margin for managing the spread. And that's why CASA is important. Okay. And in addition to that, if the CASA is not so good, at least bank people need to strive hard to get the non-interest income. 
so that the non interest income can compensate the burden on the loan accounts and as a result we can offer the competitive price to the uh, client on loan segment clear clear then loan capital adequacy is nothing but it is a important factor which is stored by reserve bank of india and accordingly we need to necessarily maintain that capital okay against the risk weighted assets then so you see how to improve the branch profitability branch specific branch specific are balance between profit growth and risk these three are the risk one side profit another side growth third side risk so in order to focus on growth if you take more risk then that then it is not so worthy enough isn't it for the sake of profit go for high risky loans high uh, low rated loans then also it is a future problem isn't it so that is what one thing therefore balance between these three then strategic fit and unique role for each branch in the network because no standard formula can be applicable for all the branches across okay and analyze the customer base and remember out of customer base there is a 20 80 formula means for any branch there are only 20% of the branch customers who are contributing the larger amount of business to the bank and if that is the case who are they what kind of business they are whether they are availing all the products from us all that you need to uh, focus on identify what is the best new product analyze the competition set specific goals by the branch and execute the marketing campaign this is branch specific and then these are the generic means anybody will tell focus np reduction quality loan net interest income casa cost management customer relationship management be courteous handle complaints properly these are the generic means always applicable as profitability is a measure of organization's profit relative to its expenses it compares how much profit a company makes compared with the overall revenue cost profitability is a measurement of efficiency ultimately its success or failure profitability is a measure of cost and expenses to its liabilities and assets which is incorrect okay out of the following which one is not a major major of a profit gross profit operating profit netted profit net profit which is not very good very good which one of the following is a which statement is incorrect which one of the following statement is incorrect profit is an absolute amount where profitability is a relative one profitability is an absolute amount whereas profit is a relative one profitability is a measurement of efficiency of a company in relation to its size of the business whereas profit is an absolute number determined by the <coughs> amount of income or revenue above and beyond the cost of expense of the ent entity incurs although a company can realize a profit this does not necessarily mean that the company is profitable <coughs> so profit is not relative profit is always an absolute amount profitability is only relative so therefore <coughs> b is b is the incorrect answer increased staff productivity is one of the most important tool to increase branch profitability out of the following which one is not true in this regard so technology alone is sufficient to increase staff productivity technology alone cannot isn't it then the next part next part i think very significant one all of you know when we do the customer uh, related businesses then these things becomes very critical one is we have to know the product we also need to carry out the kyc pan it 
then CIC credit information report. We have to credit information companies given report. Civil we check. Then we visit. Then we televerify. Then uh, immovable property if there is involved. Then we visit that also. Then title verification by the advocate. Then uh, the waiting. Then the quantum of loan repayment period. So all these are critical aspects. Am I right? So these are need to be visited. But is it that only sufficient? Don't you think that there is a, a Maslow's theory plays an equal role? Because all products just because of these things can't be sold. Because depending upon the customer where he is, according to that only, we need to communicate a particular product to the customer. Okay. Now, if that is the case, you can see here how the entire market gets segmented. The market of the retail gets segmented on multiple counts. You see, geographically, which country, which is state, which region, which city, which neighborhood. Demographically, age, gender, sex, family, education. Psychographic, lifestyle, social class, personality. Behavior-wise, user status, user rate, benefit, sort, occasion. What is that? Loyalty attitude. So multiple factors, multiple way the customers are, can be segmented for appropriate marketing. So what is the Maslow theory? Maslow theory says that need of a human being. See, ultimately, why we are offering a product to the client? You got to satisfy the customer need. Now, if that is the case, what is the need? Need hierarchy works like this. Basic needs are there. They are known as survival needs. Then next is the safety and security needs. These two needs are known as physiological needs. Whereas these three needs are known as psychological needs. And the third need is a love and belonging, that is affection. And then fourth need is a self-esteem. And fifth need is everything is done, self-actualization. So you can see here, simultaneously, suiting to that means basic to basic. First of all, in the products also. In this level, customer is uh, expecting only the basic saving account. Basic personal accident cover, housing loan, if at all, because to uh, be a safe in a better house. Okay. Then second is now he wants recurring deposit. Monthly sum amount must be saved. Life insurance product, endowment policy, mutual fund. This is at the second level. Then third, you can see here. Now, see, car loan, he wants professional development, he wants want health policies also, you want SIP also, because now he wants to have a circle where he can really discuss, talk. Now, next is the self-esteem. And self-esteem means, yes, I am someone. So now I have two houses, second housing loan, term insurance. Okay. Like the next is the last retirement solution, pension plan, everything done 50 years plus over. Now I'm thinking about what is my next plan too? Okay, senior citizen deposit scheme, all those things are here at the last. Clear? Means which product in which stage of life, which is the, with the way in which the needs levels goes from low to high. Okay, basic income, basic income impact. Okay, basic income impact on our product selling. Do you get the connect now? Are you, are you able to connect it? Hello, the way I am talking? Okay. Now, simultaneously remember, merely knowing the Maslow theory is not sufficient because customer expectations are all equally important. And the customer satisfaction level and whether are they suitable to the customer expectations or not, that is decided on four important factors. One is the tangibility of service, reliability, responsiveness and assurance. See, basically service is intangible. Basically, what is mean by service? Service is that particular activity which you do when your customer is in presence. Am I right? And that activity happens and that's the way service gets completed. Service never ever ownership is passed to the client. So as a result, service is always intangible. But as a banker, we can create that moment of truth and make that service a tangible one. For example, the way you hand it over passbook to the client. When the client is just leaving, 
just stand up on your chair and offer him the regard the way customer feels that is all together different okay this is the way you can make the service visible service tangible service feelable okay that is how the tangibility reliability means the word what you say the customer should feel yes here is a true person whatever he is telling that can be relied upon responsive is the customer said and we react to it we we respond to it we provide what he is expecting that is all or otherwise whenever we are not in a position to do so then do we have the ability to assure that this will happen by this day and this is the way assurance these are the four important elements of customer satisfaction and anywhere we are failed then customer is unhappy such unhappiness continued the customer is aggrieved and that aggrieved aggrievedness only leads to customer complaints and when the customer complaints are not resolved then they go to the next level maybe internal ombudsman maybe external ombudsman now here is a question the customer segment whose income level is between 10 lakhs to 50 lakhs is referred as i told you who is this fellow here is a mass market now to understand that market let us make a note here this is the selent research selent is a company they have researched and they gave the stat okay 2 to 10 lakhs is a mass market 10 to 50 lakhs is a mass affluent and 50 to 400 is a super affluent 400 to 4000 is a high net worth 4000 to 1 lakh 20000 is super high net worth and above 1 lakh 20000 ultra high net worth now this see high net worth ultra high net worth super high net worth do you think these people will expect you to give a housing loan do they they are never am i right then what do they want they expect you the portfolio management service they expect from you the uh, uh, the uh, uh, investment management from you isn't it so that is the way when the customers income level goes up their expectations of services are altogether different and therefore suiting to their need we need to design the product suitable to that okay next which of the following need falls within the classification of maslow's hierarchy of needs physiological safety need social need urgent need which is which need falls within the hierarchy of needs so psychological safety and social there is nothing like urgent need in the maslow's hierarchy of needs okay then customer expectation of service quality mainly depend on following thing which thing it is depends on good yes any doubt any question archi archi any question yeah arohi arohi any question you have raised the hand if you have yeah yeah thank you. yeah good so answer for this is answer for this is all the four then abc bank has decided to launch a new deposit product core saving account with some special features to attract the customers under which category of customer need the product falls which category it falls it falls the basic thing that is a physiological needs then next i think we can move on this topic in a very uh, slow way as you know the what products under the retail banking product retail banking offers the deposit products liability products asset products on liability side we have got a deposits deposits are classified basically on two types one is a demand deposit another one is a time deposit commonly known as term deposit commonly known as term deposit demand deposits are further classified 
demand deposits are further classified they are current account they are savings bank account savings bank account there is a low interest current account there is no interest current account no interest savings bank account low interest okay but current account and savings bank account cost of maintenance of this account is very high why because the number of transactions are high number of transactions are high so naturally to maintain those transactions we need to put the people on people on working whereas on term deposit though rate of interest is high maintenance of term deposit is very very low costed okay maintenance cost is very low i hope you appreciate this correct no so therefore ca casa is known as current account and savings account current account and savings account are known as casa and you know pretty well why the casa is important why the casa is important okay now if anybody whenever before opening a current account of a company company there are few things you need to take care one is that company may come to open a current account but you have to ensure that whether company is having a credit facility or loan from some other bank and if they have they are having any loan from other bank then you have to ask them how much is your exposure how much is the loan now because rbi gave a guideline that in case the other person that company has got a exposure of the banking system less than 5 crore current account opening is not restricted not restricted but what whenever we open such account we have to inform that bank that their current account is maintained by you also okay and if I, if as and when the credit facility availed by them from banking becomes 5 crore or more definitely we have to inform them and ask the customer to close the account because more than 5 crore if he is having credit limit if he is having a loan then he is not supposed to maintain a current account with the other bank he can maintain only the bank account with whom bank account with that particular consortium bank or group bank which has got a at least more than 10% of exposure to him more than 10% means let us say he is having 8 crore deposit 8 crore loan 8 crore loan if he is having and this 8 crore is distributed amongst five banks five bank put together they have given him 8 crore so naturally 10% of 8 crore is 80 lakhs isn't it any bank which is giving him more than 80 lakhs loan now he can have a current account with such bank only not with any other bank as the doubt is clear as the point is clear hello okay means current account opening generally no objection when there is an objection only when that particular customer is enjoying credit limit total credit limit more than 5 crores from the banking system then only that company's current account cannot be opened by other banks okay now next other bank can open a collection account but that collection account also if they open within 2 days within two working days that bank need to remit the entire collection into the main cash credit account or od account wherever this person is enjoying the credit limit next see next is the uh, liability products again i think uh, any current account open any account open first six months we have to watch the transaction because there is a possibility of any Uh, uh, suspicious activity or a fraudulent activity and a bank is supposed to report suspicious transaction okay bank officials may likely be held responsible in case in the first 6 months they don't monitor it and fraud happens okay similarly there is a saving bank account and with regard to saving bank account there are multiple guidelines we'll try discussing them tomorrow tomorrow then we'll complete those uh, areas but today i stop at this juncture and leave the class for any doubt or now you tell me whether the speed is okay yes is it is it matching the requirement the speed 
expert. Now, any doubt, any question, please ask. Okay. Are you following? Are you following? Good, good. Okay. And you are most welcome to put me uh, any chat. Okay. My, my mobile number, once again, I'm giving you. Okay. Any doubt, any question, please don't hesitate to raise because this is the attempt you can make uh, and be successful in the exam and my uh, efforts will be there to help you. Yes, I'm, I'm doing that only. Okay. Only important points. Thank you, Arohi. Okay. And this presentation, I'll share with you. Go through that. Okay. Go through that. And any doubts are there, identify them and you can raise them. Okay. Bye. Good night. Okay. I think there is 15 minutes time is there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, since I have said pack up, <laughs> you're packing it up. But I think our time was up to 9.45. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. So questions are very lengthy and answers are also so. Yeah, yeah. This is These are all the questions from your retail banking booklet only. Okay. Uh, but the, these questions will provide you uh, the, uh, what you can say, the understanding of the topic. Okay. So since very first day we are there, tomorrow onwards there is a possibility of stretching 5-10 minutes more also. Okay. Be ready. 9.50 or 9.55 also sometimes it can go. Can a current account be opened based on no objection certificate from banks having exposure? Yeah, definitely. So if they are allowing it and there is a purpose for opening an account and they are going to monitor with the customer based on the statement, absolutely no problem. Okay. Absolutely no problem. Okay. Any, any doubt, any question, you can unmute and talk. No problem. Hello? Hari, I'm, uh, Hari. I'm sorry, I think suddenly I said I should have... Uh, no problem. Uh, Exam friends, point of view, we need to prepare differently. Yeah. Yeah, I think retail banking, there was not a bad paper. Retail banking was a good paper. Any, any doubt with regard to Sridhar? Any? Because retail banking, uh, last time, my particularly the batch which I was there, people have performed very well. Ah, Indian economy was uh, not so good, but this time Indian economy also, people have performed well. Yes, what is your point of view? Sir, could, uh, could you please explain restrictions to current account? Yeah. Uh, Nitya, uh, do, do, do you want to listen now? So see, as far as current account concerned, the only one restriction Reserve Bank of India came out. Originally, Reserve Bank of India came out and it said no current account to be opened when the borrower is enjoying any credit limit. Later on, the Reserve Bank of India relaxed that now. And that relaxation says the customer can open a current, uh, current account with any other bank when he wants to open a collection account with a condition that within two days, the entire collection amount goes to the original cash credit account holder. And where the person uh, uh, having a more than five crore uh, turnover, more than five crore aggregate credit limit, then he has to invariably open current account only with those banks, at least out of that consortium, which, which are all the banks who are having exposure more than 10% to him. Means... Let us say 9 crore is the total limit. So 90 lakhs is the 10%. Means whichever bank has sanctioned more than 90 lakhs to him, there he can open. So that paper we need to give now. Yeah, we can. Nothing wrong in that. We have, I think, collected questions. Let's, we'll ask him. Okay, we'll ask Sajesh to get that. No problem. But if you have questions, you can raise those questions. We'll try to resolve them during our class. Okay. And though this class, it is a class of retail entire. So we are having the deposit product. We are having the loan products. We are having the service products. We, we will be covering within the span of this seven classes, almost entire gamut of retail banking, including the mathematics. Including the mathematics part we'll be covering. Okay. Be confident. Don't worry, Sridhar. And you have any specific thing? Please don't hesitate to post me in the uh, WhatsApp. Okay? Clear? 
definitely yeah. there are many questions okay yeah yeah sir like this only one question was asked in the previous exam sir if you are in point of uh, manager they said for whom you can open a current account yeah like that only sir they have yeah. given the options yeah that. see and this once you conceptual clarity is there no you will not hesitate to answer that the particular customer if he is not having credit limits more than 5 crore with any other bank then no restriction with regard to opening current account point clear number 2 if he is enjoying credit limit 5 crore and above with anybody else or any other banks then he can open a current account only with one of such bank which is giving you giving him more than 10% of that uh, aggregate exposure okay clear so yeah. this this clarity if you have then answering won't be a problem at all okay no sir options he, are like he is a fresh customer he, uh, he, he is a fresh customer and opening a current account what is the problem absolutely no problem except one thing that his identity details now which which kind of customer whether he is an individual whether he is a company whether it is a partnership firm depending upon the kind of entity we will be asking him the documents depending upon the entity we will be asking those authorized people to provide the additional documents as their identity and as their uh, residence then in addition to this we will be asking the identity documents relating to company partnership firm or that proprietary firm then we will be asking the details relating to the kind of business why because we need to know about that in order to match with our kyc requirement Uh, due diligence these are the few things we need to focus while opening the current account okay so like yes. this once the concept is now see tomorrow we'll be completing the kyc while talking about the kyc kyc is not merely taking the document putting a stamp and putting it inside the locker no kyc is all about knowing the customer and knowing the customer's uh, uh, business so that our system can classify him appropriately yeah definitely definitely nitya don't worry don't worry okay we'll have there are many mcqs are there don't worry absolutely okay okay and and more particularly i think one day that is the last day this uh, this is reserved for only clarifying the doubt that day we'll have a full fledged uh, questions okay and not only one area and all the entire area of the retail banking will have questions okay yes nitya the point is that the the clarity with regard to uh, the every concept whatever we are talking no you should not go with the mcq question and answer see for example when i say what is horizontally uh, Uh, business what is that horizontal that must be very clear what is vertical that must be clear okay we are talking about the available data available information across the products we are talking about product uh, delivery specific or that department specific data product specific data used by the products and next again another product again another data that kind of thing happens in horizontal that horizontal and vertical concept is clear exam no problem whatever way the question comes okay i hope you are getting me the way in which i am trying to put forth you okay is it clear or do you have few more okay don't worry don't hesitate we will 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 go in a very comfortable manner uh, no issue uh, when we go slow we will be covering lesser points but at least those lesser points we will try to focus only on exam oriented points so that you can have a, a the proper understanding at least rest of the things when i share with you the presentation you can go through and you can raise that point in case when whenever i provide you 5 10 minutes time for clarification okay shall we call it a day okay or any anybody any anyone has got a question they can ask huh? i am there because uh, it it was my mistake uh, 
I was under as usual my regular practice of 9:30. I put an alarm, and once alarm was ringing, I asked you to uh, close. But actually, today it is a 15 minutes extra that I forgot. What this same time, 7:30 to 8:30, then 8:45 to 9:45. Okay, 8:45 to 9:45. That is the time. Daily same time. Actually, my daily time is 8 to 9:30. and therefore that was fixed in my uh, mobile phone and it started ringing okay bye hari now you can you can close the uh, session okay